Hello and welcome to Connecting Kitsap. My name is Matt Murphy and I'm the President and CEO of the South Kitsap Chamber of Commerce. With Connecting Kitsap, we put you in touch with what to do, where to go, and the people to know in Kitsap County. Hello and welcome to this episode of Connecting Kitsap. Today we're going to hear from uh, Jamie Forsyth from the Small Business Development Center, the SBDC in Washington State. And she's going to talk to us about some of the grant opportunities, the uh, different funding opportunities, the tax credits that are available to um, small businesses during these, um, dare we say, uh, troubling times. And uh, so let's just go ahead and dive right in uh, to, the, um, to the podcast uh, and, to, and to the video. And um, enjoy. And uh, thanks for listening. I would like to introduce Jamie Forsyth. I've heard her before speak on this subject. Uh, she is with the uh, Small Business Development Center located in, uh, they're currently located in Paulsville. The uh, SBDC is hosted by Western Washington University. And so they've got the weight of the university kind of behind them. And uh, Jamie, we'll tell you a little bit about more about herself, the SBDC, but most importantly, the ever-changing world of um, funding and grant opportunities available to small businesses. and. Um, Whatever Jamie tells you today could possibly be different tomorrow, but she is going to give us the most up-to-date, um, the up-to-date down low on, uh, on funding and grant opportunities in South Kitsap. I would encourage everybody to write down your questions. Write down your questions. If you have a question, you can put it in the chat. You can raise your hand at the end. When I say any questions, you can flap your wings and, and, and flag us down, and um, I will... Um, we'll give you an opportunity to ask your questions because this is probably your op. I mean, it's not your only opportunity. Obviously, um, I think uh, she put her contact information in the chat. So if you want to go to the chat right now, you can, you can copy down her contact information. Um, but it is an opportunity for you to ask those questions. And chances are, if you ask the question, others have the question also. So Jamie Forsyth, I will pass it over to you. All right, thanks so much, Matt, and um, thanks for having me here. I'm gonna share my screen right away and um, jump in here and get rid of my reminders there. <laughs> but anyway, so um, today I know what you're all here for is you know, information on you know, latest stimulus options and current stimulus options. Um, I just did though wanna spend just a minute talking about the Small Business Development Center and what we do there, um, because there will be a time post COVID when you're back to normal and, and this isn't your top priority, hopefully. So um, again, we're, we're a national network um, of services provided through uh, state colleges or universities to provide um, support for small businesses. It's been, we've been doing this for like 40 years. And in my case, my sponsor is Western Washington University and uh, with a bunch of local sponsors, including Kitsap Bank, Kitsap Credit Union, First Federal and the city of Polsbo to start and we welcome more sponsors. Um, but it's thanks to those folks that we're able to bring this office um, to Kitsap County again. There used to be one in Bremerton a while back if anyone remembers. Um, so, oops, let me go back one. So it's all um, no cost, it's very confidential. We're all uh, MBAs. We go through a six month certification process um, that's the Washington CBA reference. We are um, a, we collaborate with each other throughout the state. You know, for example, if someone wants to export, um, I've passed the test, but I'm not an expert, so I bring in one of our export experts to work with someone who wants to export. So it's just a it's a it's an amazing resource. And once people sign up as clients, um, really, you know, I have a lot of times where people just give me a quick call on the phone or um, you know, a quick email for, for a question they have, and that's absolutely fine. You know, when we first meet up, we'll set up a Zoom meeting and get to know each other and see what your priorities are and what I can do to help. But there's almost nothing you know, we can't um, advise you, with, you know, on. We don't, we don't do the work for you, but we're your advisor and working with you. And just uh, generally, as you can imagine right now, um, what we're, um, what we're focusing on probably in order. And surprisingly, right after people needing um, help just to stay in business right now are startups. And, and that's for all sorts of reasons. And what I would say for that is that there's a lot of people that are, you know, kind of tire kicking and have some ideas and stuff. 
but at the point where, where you've really made an investment, you know, you've bought some big equipment, you have your business plan, you're working on your financing, we can help the startups as well. And as you can imagine, buy and sell, pandemic pivots, and then, you know, our sort of our meat and potatoes is just helping people, you know, do uh, create new marketing plans, figuring out how baby boomers can turn their businesses over to, um, you know, their employees, um, all sorts of interesting things we're doing. There's nothing we, we won't do. There's no question that's too small to answer. So we're glad to be a resource here. Okay, so <laughs> here's, I know what you're all waiting for. Um, I um, spent a few hours last night reading through the bill because it's interesting because right away you realize that uh, everybody and their mother has an interpretation. But when I start seeing that, and that's easy for me if I can use that, but then when I start seeing that they're not all agreeing on you know, how much money or exactly how it's going to roll out, then I just went back to the legislation myself. And, um, and as Matt said, um, things change, especially right now when the bill isn't even, it's supposed to be signed Friday, I guess. And at that point, you know, they start um, with these um, interim final rules um, to figure out exactly how it's gonna be manifested. And, and uh, it might change a little bit as well. So this is just sort of a preview um, and not to hang your hat on at the moment, but in general, this is what it's gonna include. I mean, the details, this, the, the topics are, what's in the bill, but the details on how it's going to work aren't finalized yet. So um, PPP right now, it's not going to be extended past March 31st. They've added another, you know, seven and a quarter billion just to take care of what they already have in the hopper. Apparently there's still, there's still 30,000 applications, um, you know, that haven't been processed yet. Um, but as once the funds are allocated, you will be getting the funds. So the thing is not to wait till the end because already I think, I think like Bank of America has stopped um, has stopped taking PPP loans. I heard anecdotally from a client that Chase said they weren't processing the new form, which means you know that using the gross income. But anyway, the bottom line is you want to act on a PPP now uh, to make sure you can get your application, not just into your lender, but that the SBA, you know, processes it and approves it um, before March 31st. Um, the targeted idle grants, so they've expanded this a little bit, and I'll get into what we already know about the targeted idle grants, but it looks like they're adding another type of targeted idle grant, which is a flat 5,000 and really a lot of this is just focusing on uh, hardest hit, smallest businesses, low income, minority. And so those details um, on who that includes, uh, we have yet to find out. Uh, interestingly, on um, the current targeted idle grants, they used a policy map that showed low income areas and downtown Polsbo and um, Fjord Drive were on the low income map. So, I'm not sure who comes up with these maps, but um, we'll wait to see if they're using the same ones for this. Uh, the shuttered venue operator grant, operators grant, this officially has been just kicked down the road from the last, um, the last act. Um, but the interesting thing is now what we're hoping, because before the rule was up until now is that you could either get a shuttered venue operators grant or a PPP. And so people who wanted to wait for this very advantageous grant, which you could, um, you could get way more money than the PPP, but it, it's not live yet. And then they said, you can't get, if you get a PPP, then you're not eligible for this. But when I read this last night, and I tried to read it again this morning and see if it still read the same way, um, it looks like you now can get a PPP and if you get a shuttered venue operators grant, they'll just subtract the amount of the PPP um, by what the award would be for the shuttered venue, venue operators grant. And again, this is just legislation that's written. There's nothing that's live right now for this. So if that's you, just you know, we're, sign up as a client and we'll get you um, set up so as soon as we know how that's gonna work. Because the bottom line is you know, right now for the, those people waiting for the shuttered venue grant, They've got all their eggs in one basket because they couldn't get a PPP. So if this is correct, 
you know, and the problem is the deadline is coming up for the PPP. So it's a really kind of a dire situation that if you want to make sure you get something through the PPP, you've got to get that PPP um, application in. And, but again, there's, this isn't live yet. This is just written and, and isn't, um, you know, live with the banks yet. So we're, um, we'll, we'll have to see how that plays out. But that's, that's what I read on that one. Um, the idle grants program, um, oh, actually, okay, see, this is, I wrote it last night, as you can tell. So this is the same thing that I just said, $5,000 to the smallest, hardest hit businesses. Restaurant relief, that's gonna be a big one. That's gonna be this prioritized revenue replacement grant program um, up to $10 million per entity. I mean, you can read that, 5 million per location. And it's based on simple math of subtracting your 2020 revenue from 2019. Uh, that's going to be huge. That's that's a really um, pretty amazing uh, opportunity right there. Again, you know, this isn't even signed yet, let alone um, you know the fact that uh, you know it'll be you know minimum end of next week, if not later, before you know these things actually are up and running. Um, and this community navigator program, I have no idea what this is. So um, it's it's they. They called it a pilot program, and um, you can read, you know, what I wrote there: grants or contracts to improve access to assistance programs or resources. Which is, you know, they they gave examples of state and local governments and certain types of nonprofits or whatever, but they haven't spelled up. This isn't spelled out at all. It's a pilot program. I just put it in there to, you know, look like I was actually reading the bill, but I have no idea what this means at this point. So another uh, paycheck protection plan, always a lot going on with that. Just, you know, like I said, um, you know, now shuttered venue, people waiting for the shuttered venue, hopefully it looks like can get it, but they got to get it quick. Um, the, this up, latest update, this was by executive order, you know, just um, came down like the beginning of this month, basically, um, to use uh, gross income uh, on line seven of schedule C instead of the profit loss. It was a big deal, but the problem is so many people that would have qualified for this had already applied for their PPP. And so I have another slide that says, here's where you're complaining because I've had a lot of people just really upset. You know, if they had only waited, you know, another month or a few weeks or even days in some cases, they would have got a way more beneficial amount on their PPP. Um, and, and, uh, you know, again, like there's right now there's like, there's a process to complain, but I, I don't hold out any hope for that. But realistically, for the people that hadn't gotten a PPP yet, um, it wasn't the people that were on top of things and stuff. It typically it tended to be really, um, you know, the people that were suffering the most, the smallest businesses, and um, these weren't people getting you know big amounts. Um, uh, interesting thing I noticed too is that internet only publishing organizations are now eligible for a PPP, um, which, you know, that's new. And so there are some who may be, uh, I think in Kitsap County, we, that might uh, cover a few of our organizations here. Um, again, uh, program ends March 31st and they have to, loans have to be approved before then. And banks are not, uh, they don't have to keep open the PPP um, program, you know, until right before then they can, you know, it's up to them, you know, when they think they can, um, what the turnaround time is, you know, to get loans approved and, and um, you know, to make sure that they can um, serve all their, um, you know, their customers. I wanted to bring up something because uh, a couple of things here, because I think they're just really um, sort of um, underused and one of them is a lot of people are working with, um, you know, have some various forms of whether it's themselves or their employees on unemployment. Um, but there's something called shared work, which maybe not a lot of people know about. But I'll just give you an example of what happened last work last year for these people that they had their they signed up for the program of shared work where um, they have to uh, guarantee to be on the program. They have to pay their employees. 50 to 90% of their typical wage, and then unemployment makes up, you know, 10 to 50%, the, the, whatever the difference is, you know, for that, um, for that pay period. And so what that did was, you know, not only did it really, you know, help out the business owners, 
but also um, because they run unemployment, their employees at the same time last year, you know, got the $600 a week, you know, boost. So, you know, they stayed employed, they got help in being empl employed, you know, by both the state unemployment and, you know, the federal, um, the federal addition to, you know, unemployment. So shared work is something that, you know, depending on your situation um, was something I think a lot of people could have used if they had known, you know, that it was available. Um, PPP and the employee retention tax credit. I'm going to get into that tax credit later, but but I just for, for anyone that is thinking that you can't do both, that's the way it was last year. This year they said we changed our mind. It's ret retroactive to last year, um, so you don't have to worry about that anymore. Um, loan forgiveness. If you don't have um, or, or if for any reason you think that your loan isn't going to be fully forgiven and do check with your lender as well, I would just wait for right now um, because I've had people that out of desperation spent their entire uh, PPP on rent. That's just what they needed to do, you know, to, to keep their doors open. And so technically only 40% of that would be forgiven. And actually, to be honest, because so few people um, did something so that they won't get full forgiveness. We're not even sure if that's exactly the formula they're going to use on the forgiveness. But anyway, what I would say is because things keep getting you know better and better, that if you aren't going to get full forget forgiveness, don't apply for forgiveness yet. Wait and see if they make it easier. Because maybe, I mean, I don't doubt that at some point they could say, well, as long as you spend it in good faith, you know, on rent, you know, we're just going to give you forgiveness anyway. I mean, I'm making that up, of course, but but you have 10 months at the uh, end of your um, PPP period, which was, for most people was 24 weeks last year. So you have 10 months from them then to apply for um, um, forgiveness. And so we're, you know, we're to, we're to October. So you don't have to worry about it right now if you aren't going to get full forgiveness. Okay, <laughs> this is my PPP complaints department. I was just um, on the phone with um, uh, Congressman Kilmer's staff and they're hearing, they've heard from people as well. And the SBA is hearing from people. So I'm just throwing this up here now. You can get it later, but, but basically so many people were upset that they wouldn't, um, you know, can't recalculate their uh, PPP loans to take advantage of this Schedule C um, gross amount um, change that I just figured I'm not going to spend any time here, but I can I can give you that information if you want. OK, employee retention tax credit. This is a really cool thing. You can get up to $19,000 per employee on qualified wages. Um, and again, this is probably this is to be turned over to your CPA because this is this is accountant stuff, but up to $5,000 um, you can get up to $5,000 on up to $10,000 in qualified wages. And that's, I think it's from March 12th. It's not the full year, it's from when they declared the COVID or virus active. And then, um, so you have to just do, um, you just have to do a correction on your, or a, well, I forget what you call it. But anyway, 20, 2021, you can get up to $7,000 per employee and $10,000 in qualified wages in each of Q1 and Q2. So the total is 5,000 for 2020, um, you know, uh, 14 in the first six months of 2021. And that's quite a, quite a boost for anyone that, that can qualify for that. The big thing is that you can't, um, any wages paid with PPP funds are not qualified to be used in the calculation for the employee retention tax credit and so for that reason, you know, people who might have just very easily, you know, used 100% of their PPP on wages might want to spin that 40% off so they have more qualified wages, you know, for this employee retention tax credit. Um, we are not accountants. And um, this gets into the, the details, you know, I've had CPAs reach out to me. We had discussions back and forth on, you know, how this works. and. Um, um, just verifying things, but um, but that this is for your accountant or your CPA to discuss if you think you're qualified. Okay, 
So other um, disaster recovery options, the idle grant, idle, idle targeted grant, once again, if you um, applied for that advance and at the time when they still said they had an advance and you got zero because they ran out of money to $9,000, then you have, you were sent an email by the SBA um, starting about February 1st. And uh, it, it's the big qualifier is that you have to be in a low income area. Um, and then there's like, a, I think it's a 30, you have to show a 30% reduction between 2019 and 20, 2020. Um, but what I'd say is nobody, since nobody knew they were getting this email, I keep running into people who, um, when they hear about it from me, they go and look <laughs> and find it. <laughs> and I had um, one person in a chat went and checked and saw that she um, had it in her junk mail from several weeks earlier. And it turns out she's getting 9,000 tax-free dollars because she went and found that email. So um, there's areas definitely in uh, Port Orchard that are in the low-income area. Um, and, but the other thing I would say is in general, we just tell people just apply for everything you can. And in this case, you know, you decide for yourself because they'll, you know, you'll see if you're in a low income area, but, um, you know, maybe they'll, you know, they, they've already branched out with these targeted idle grants. So my, you know, my, my um, thought is always just apply. And um, even if they, you get rejected now, if they ever change that low income area, you know, you know, you're in the queue, but, but anyway, like I said, there are definitely areas in, in uh, Port Orchard that are in that low income area. So idle, you still have the opportunity to go out and get um, a, a long-term 30 year loan at 3.75% um, interest um, for the for-profit businesses and 2.75 for nonprofits. Um, SBA loans, uh, there, that's been a great deal for people who were doing that to buy businesses or improve businesses, um, you know, that they got last year six months of federal debt relief, that six months of payments up to, I think, $9,000 a month um, were just paid for, you know, by the government. They were, they were just gone. And then this year they added on, I think, three more months and then um, and for certain targeted low income minority, whatever, and they also got another five months on top of that. So if you had SBA backed loans, which you get through your, um, your banks and credit unions, um, then that was a, that's been a great deal. And, and if you take them out this year, I can't remember, I think you get at least three months, if not six, but, um, and then shuttered venue operators grant. Yep, still TBD. And that, um, and again, you know, I just uh, want to thank our local funders again. And I know Kitsap Bank was a real leader in this, um, you know, to get this center opened up um, in Kitsap County. So um, here's my, you know, if it, here's my contact information. And if it looks like you've got something that's going to take a while, I can answer easy questions quickly. But otherwise, let's get you signed up as a client, just have that relationship, get you signed up for our biweekly newsletter where we try and keep people up to date and um, would love to um, you know, work with you and your business. And that's all I have. You should, Matt, you're muted there. Yeah, should I know. I, yeah, I'm like, should, I, keep, you all, you should I stop sharing? Um, yeah, if you want to, yeah, because um, Jamie put this information in the chat also. Um, and then I wanted to share real quick, if I can, if I can figure out to do it successfully. There's the map, the, the policy, the policy map, map. From, from the SB, uh, SBA that shows the area in South Kitsap and Bremerton and the different, you know, that um, qualifies for the targeted mm -hmm. idol. So that's the purple areas. So if your business is yeah, and on that here, yeah, that and on that new one that's coming out for the five thousand dollars a piece in the new legislation, I'm not sure if the, if if this is a requirement as well. We have yet to see. Yeah, so that's that. Um, and so, and I don't know if there's any questions. Let me open up the chat here real quick. Um, 
I don't see any questions. So I guess um, we are open to um, flapping your wings. If you have a question for Jamie, um, raise your hand, uh, you know, let us know um, if you have any questions there. Let me bring the participant list back up see if anybody's done that. Um, so what is the process, Jamie, to become a, a, a client, uh, to sign up for you guys? It's easy. We just send you a link and, um, you know, it's an old, we're subject to the Wazoo's um, database. They're the lead office for the whole state. And it's just, you know, they just ask for some information and then, you know, we verify that you're an actual business or close to it and then um, send you a link, you know, that allows you to then, you know, sign up for a, um, we do meetings on Zoom right now. And uh, we, you know, it, it runs the gamut. I'll just tell you that. I mean, it's just been really fun. I mean, today was a, was a great win. I had somebody come to me who um, they unfortunately um, clicked on a link. Um, their uh, paychecks, a, a, it's a payroll processing company. Apparently, you know, there was a link in their email that said, you know, sign up for the PPP and thinking that, oh, this is something that'll make it easier because they process our paychecks. They clicked on it. It went to a FinTech, which is um, not a, necessarily a, I mean, it's like uh, Intuit and Square and all sorts of people were qualified to do PPP loans that weren't your local banks. And they clicked on it and it ended up everything went crazy. They were offered $70,000 less than they should have gotten. No one would respond to them. And so I got the SBA and uh, Congressman Kilmer's office involved. And just this morning, we found out that after this has been going on since January, and literally a half an hour before we got on the ball on the call with Congressman Kilmer's office, she got an email that they said, okay, we'll give you everything we're supposed to give you and and, and everything was resolved. But, um, you know, that's something that, um, you know, um, that we can help, uh, you know, we can help people too. And the other thing I would say is I've had a lot of, and I, I apologize if I don't think there's anyone on this call from like one of the big banks, but there's been a lot of frustration with the small business owners in being able to get um, customer service, you know, and a response for the big banks, um, you know, during all of this and trying to get the PPP. And like, I'm pretty sure that they were parking the small business owners while they help the big, you know, business owners first, or that's the only thing I can think of that makes any sense at all. But with, with that said, like our local banks were just freaking rock stars. Like, you know, they, you know, I've, I've had a number of people who, you know, um, told me that they just, they switched banks. That was all they needed, you know, that they couldn't talk to anybody, you know, then this is the most stressful time they've ever been through. And they called, um, I mean, I think every local bank just got rave reviews in terms of um, being responsive and, you know, um, you know, a lot of us too, we feel like sometimes we're just doing a little business therapy you know, for people, but, um, and it's, it's really made the difference for people to understand that as small business owners, um, that your, your local banks are really here to support you. Right. And that's what I would say is that I know that um, I talked to, to Brad Gitch from, from Kitsap Bank and, and they were gearing up for the this last round with a whole crew of people. Um, Peninsula Credit Union was great. Kitsap Credit Union was great. So definitely talk to the people that you currently do business with. But, um, you know, like Jamie said, dealing with a local person is so much better than dealing with somebody online. Um, give those guys a call. And, and as she pointed out, I mean, we are under the gun to get this done by the end of the month. So if you haven't started the process, you need to jump on that. And I can tell you, it is a two page process. I did a video on it. You can go and you can check out our YouTube channel. Did a video on it. Mm -hmm. It took us about 23 minutes to talk about the process and that's about as long as it takes to apply for it. So um, I encourage everybody to do that. Uh, Jamie, this, yeah. the, the, the schedule. Yeah, you know, in it go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, you know, and I'm still surprised that, you know, like I live and breathe this stuff, but it's, all, it's still been interesting that, you know, as of like in the last month, there are like you know, especially sole proprietors or independent contractors that didn't know they could have applied for a PPP last year. And they never got the word that that changed because that's not the way it started out. And so, you know, for that reason, and anybody, you don't have to be a client to sign up for our, um, our um, newsletter, you know, either. So, okay. yeah, and the, I can um, put that in the chat. The, the Schedule C requirement, the line, what, seven versus 31, that was one that they introduced 
during the two week time frame. That does that still apply now? Um, yeah, because as it turns out, they weren't even uh, they didn't even have the application ready during that two week time period. And so again, that just goes to the end of um, end of the month. Well, okay. it goes until people stop banks and lending lenders stop accepting right. applications. So, do you know anything about the uh, Working Washington uh, grant through the state? Um, anything on it's that? It's coming out at the end of the month, I think, isn't it? Okay. Like, yeah, I don't yeah. know. The, you know the, the, the governor allotted yeah, the know. money. Yeah, and that's. Um, uh, first things first, and in terms of, you know, I, my head's been so focused on getting through this stuff that, um, but I'm happy to come back you know, if you want me. Okay. But um, last time, was in, actually the, the SBDC is building a lot, or Working Washington 3 was the first time they actually reached out to us and said, will you be the boots on the ground and, you know, take all the questions for us. And so we ended up, you know, kind of like rallying and um, and ended up, I think we took over 1500 calls and emails uh, in a very short time to um, take the burden off of the, the state and, the, and the, the company that they had contracted with, you know, to run that grant. So I'm not sure if we've offered up the 24 hour phone call line um, uh, uh, for this round, but I, I know we'll, you know, this is, it's, it's a, it's a great relationship. I mean, this is what we, you know, we're here to do is support local businesses. So I'm sure we'll, we'll be there for you again. Right. Yeah. So last time um, I know that working Washington one went through Kita and the department of commerce. And, and so forest coming out, that's a, that's state money. And I talked to commissioner Greedo yesterday. She said that there will be additional money coming through the County. Once this rescue plan hits the, you know, the ink dries on it. Yeah. Nobody knows quite what that looks like yet, but um, there will be other opportunities coming down the line. And, and chances are, Jamie, we may have you back uh, again, just to talk about all those different changes. So it is it, it, the challenges continue to, to exist. Yeah, and well, in, in Kita and um, I, you know, there's what, three people in Kita and one person in my office. And we were, we're really, really close partners here. And while they're, um, they've been administering the local grants and stuff, and then, you know, I'm, I'm the, their tech support too. And I'm, I'm, you know, I do tech support for all of the SBA stuff and, um, you know, as well as whatever local grants are going on. So Kita and, you know, we're definitely um, uh, work very closely together. That's good. All right, well, thank you guys all for attending. You guys have a great day. Enjoy our almost spring day. We've got what, um, two, 10 days? 10 days until spring officially starts and then we can all go out and garden for real. Um, thanks everybody. Remember to bounce forward this weekend. That's true. Yep. Yep. Spring forward. Thanks for having me. Thank you, Jamie. Welcome. Thank you. Exciting. Thank you guys. Everybody thanks. for attending. Well, there you go, folks. Um, it's as clear as mud, and it, uh, it doesn't look like it's necessarily going to get any easier or any less uh, confusing as, as, as time goes by and, and changes come down the pike. The most you can do is um, stay tuned to um, the changes that are coming up. Uh, if you're interested, become a member or a, a client of the SBDC. You can always subscribe to their email list and their updates, as well as uh, the Chamber of Commerce here. And um, SBA also has uh, uh, update emails. So until next time, folks, um, thanks for joining us. And remember to uh, love local and shop local. Have a great day. <laughs>